The show opens up in Norway, with two men running up a rocky hillside on a damp, cloudy day. One of the men is a psychiatrist named Dr. Ben Havorsen who is the founder of a medical facility named Sanctum. Under Havorsen's leadership, this facility aims at helping shifters or shape-shifting people who can borrow other people's bodies and faces through touch. Currently, Havorsen is chasing another man, Steinar, through the treacherous hilly territory. Soon, Steinar reaches the edge of a cliff and is forced to stop. As he looks down over the sheer rock face and considers jumping into the sea, he flashes back to scenes of a blonde woman and a girl suffering in a medical facility. He has a decision to make, go back with the other man or jump. As he prepares to jump, Havorsen tackles him in the nick of time. In the next scene, both men are back in an interrogation room in Sanctum, with Havorsen in one room, sitting behind a desk. The real Steiner is unconscious on a couch next to the desk, except for his eyes, which vibrate rapidly. Steiner is Havorsen's former patient and current ally in the Sanctum. Similarly, Runa, a female shifter who had taken Steiner's identity and earlier tried to jump off the cliff, is in the interrogation room that's separated from the questioner's room by glass. Runa is Havorsen's first patient and has already successfully completed her treatment. However, lately, she is beginning to suffer from memory loss and bouts of mental confusion. Currently, she is still in Steiner's body and has his face while the real Steiner suffers a half-conscious state because of this. Next, Ben asks Runa if she was out of control on the cliff because of her recent illness. When she replies that it wasn't the only reason, Ben inquires if she was really going to jump. The shifter answers that she would have really jumped as her moods have been unstable recently. She then reveals listening to Havorsen and Steiner planning to bring a young shifter girl named June to Sanctum. Although Runa wanted to support it, she could only think of all the personal losses she had gone through in life which made her upset instead and pushed her to run away. As the two converse with each other, the camera pans out and shows the reflection of Runa who is still in Steiner's body, in the mirror. The reflection in the mirror is not a bearded man staring back, but a woman with short blonde hair, which is Runa's real form. Havorsen then reminds Runa that they must help other women, including the girl, June. They must continue to build their new family, a family of people with this same strange power of jumping into other bodies. Following this impassioned plea from Havorsen, Runa begins to twitch and transforms into her real body and face. Meanwhile, as she becomes herself again, the unconscious Steiner whose looks she had taken regains consciousness. The scene switches to a young girl in England named June who lives with her stepfather, John and brother, Ryan. Ryan lives separately in an attached cabin-like home and in a self-imposed seclusion because of a deformity and anxiety disorder. On the other hand, John gives June sedatives with breakfast disguising them as epileptic medicine and controls every aspect of her life. Currently, June writes a letter to her boyfriend, Harry, confessing her excitement about her plans to run away. She's looking forward to escaping her controlling father who's planning to take her away to a Scottish Isle on the day of her 16th birthday. On the other hand, Harry sits on his bed and counts his money when his mom, Christine asks him to wash his dad, Louis. While Harry washes his dad's hair in the sink, his mom leaves for work. She says that she's not sure if she'll be able to do the shopping, so Harry offers to do that too. Louis is severely disabled and needs round-the-clock care. Christine pushes most of the care onto Harry, other than what's done by the caregiver who stays with Louis while Christine and Harry are out during the day. Meanwhile, June looks at photos of the Scottish island they're moving to during breakfast. She says that her mom always wanted to move back north and would have loved this cold and dramatic island. However, John gruffly points out that June's mom won't be in Scotland. The scene then shifts to June's mom, Alina who currently lives in the Sanctum in Hordaland County, Norway as she has the powers of shape-shifting. Nearby, the founder of Sanctum, Dr. Havorsen sits outside and skins a rabbit. Alina sits doing chores with Siegfried, another shapeshifter patient, and complains that all they do at the clinic is the farm work necessary to keep the place going. They seem to be homesteading, fulfilling as many of their needs on the farm as possible, and only purchasing what's absolutely necessary. Sigurd answers that they all have chores to do that are purposeful. After a while, Sigurd asks about Alina's stress level as the latter hasn't been sleeping well because of frequent, vivid nightmares. Today, Havorsen is supposed to perform another test on her, but Alina thinks she'd feel more comfortable talking to Sigurd since they're both shifters. Alina's been there for four months and she's barely spoken with Sigurd. Suddenly, Rana sharply interrupts the two women, reminding Alina of the rules, no sharing secrets, because those memories might trigger a shift state. 
When Alina walks away angrily, Sigurd tells Runa that Alina told her that June's birthday is tomorrow. Elsewhere, John has Ryan's breakfast ready but June offers to take it to him since John and Ryan are fighting over the move to Scotland. She offers to talk to her brother about their move with the aim of convincing him to agree. However, Ryan doesn't answer his door, so June leaves the meal in his little transfer box since it's time for school. Following this, John drives June to school but stops at the edge of their farm property and activates her cell phone before giving it to her. She's only allowed to have it during the day at school. He then makes a speech about knowing she's upset, so she doesn't have to pretend to be happy. Despite being fully aware of knowing how hard it is for her, he says they have to move. But June says that it's okay as she's ready for a new start in the great big world. At school, John walks June all the way inside and drops her at her locker. After her father leaves, June finds a note paper in her locker with O written on it, which is Harry's signal that he's hidden a new letter for her. She goes straight to the library and takes out a hollowed out world atlas which is filled with a letter detailing how excited he is to run away with her and a jackknife. That evening, Harry buys a car on his way home from the store, partially paying for it with his dad's wedding ring. Meanwhile, John picks June up from school again and collects her phone. As they drive away, someone is taking photos of them without their knowledge. When they reach home, June stops in to visit Ryan, who shares some brotherly advice when she starts having second thoughts about running away. He says that John is all packed and ready to leave for Scotland, but Ryan doesn't want her to end up trapped and stifled like him. He pushes her to take this opportunity and make the most of it. She turns 16 tomorrow and John wants to take her away to a place with no school, no friends, and no one to ask where she is or what happened to her. On the other hand, June is worried about Ryan becoming even more isolated because of his agoraphobia and pushes him to get treatment. Ryan insists that he's not interested in the outside world. His disability involves a shortened right arm, a limp that causes him to use a cane and back pain. Today is a bad pain day, so June massages his shoulders a bit. Aware of his sister's plan to run away, Ryan tells June that Harry loves her and will take care of her, but that doesn't pay the bills, so he's gotten her a prepaid credit card with her name on it for her birthday. They hug and remind each other that everything begins at 10. Back in her room, June quickly repacks her school bag with runaway clothes. When John checks on her at bedtime, Everything looks normal. That night, Harry prepares his father for bed, as the old man obsessively rubs the spot where his ring should be. Harry then says a tearful goodbye to his dad. At 10 that night, Ryan's panic alarm goes off and John races down to save him only to find that the alarm was caused by the overflowing toilet. June hops out of bed, uses the jackknife to open the lock on her window, and then makes her escape. Outside in the back alley, Harry is waiting for her and the duo run to the car, holding hands. Once inside the car, he gives her a bag of candy for her 16th birthday. They kiss, then drive away. Harry and June have a conversation about the latter's sedative pills when suddenly the conversation is cut off. When they come around a bend and almost hit a van that's broken down in the road. Unbeknownst to them, the van's driver, Alf, is the stalker who was taking photos of June earlier. The stranger flags them down, and Harry gets out on that dark, lonely country road to help a stranger. Once the stalker has Harry behind the hood of the van listening to the engine run, June steps out to bring him his phone. Suddenly, Steiner gets out of the back of the van and addresses her by name, telling her that he's a friend of her mother, Alina. He tries to lure her into the van to listen to a phone message from Alina. Then he tells June that her mother is in a safe place and wants him to find her. Harry realizes what's happening which makes Steiner panics. He assures June that he's trying to help her and all of a sudden grabs her and pulls out a syringe. Fortunately, both June and Harry fight Steinar and Alf drives away when Harry picks up a wrench and gains the upper hand. After a brief skirmish, Harry manages to knock Steinar out with the wrench. Once they get past their initial shock, June and Harry move Steiner off the road and back into the woods. Elsewhere, Lewis wakes up moaning which forces Harry's mum, Christine to try to get Harry to deal with him. But she discovers Harry's gone and starts to get Lewis settled back down. That night, June pulls out some cash and gets them checked in a motel. Harry's shock is getting worse now that he doesn't have to concentrate on driving. Worried that he's a murderer, he wants to call the police. Even when June tries to get him to talk reasonably about things, he keeps panicking. Once Harry's asleep, June leaves the room and walks back to the scene of the crime. There, she finds Steiner right where they left him. Cautiously, she takes out her knife and rolls him onto his back. Just as she's feeling for a pulse, Steiner grabs her hand and she screams. The scene quickly shifts and we see Steiner walking into a lady's room and vomiting into the sink. He's shaking, touching his face while looking in the mirror and having flashes of the woods while ignoring his phone ringing. At the sanctum, it is revealed that it was Haverson who was calling Steinar. 
and leaving a message. Runa walks in at the end of the call and asks what's going on. In response, Haverson tells her that Steiner called, but he kept it from her because he didn't want to add to her stress. However, he shares that Steiner had good news and said an unexpected opportunity to get June had come up. After hearing this, Runa asks Ben not to shut her out anymore as she wants to be a part of finding and helping June. The chance is small that June's a shifter, but she's in danger if she is. So, June belongs at Sanctum with them. The following morning, John makes Ryan's oatmeal breakfast and spices it with a healthy dose of powdered sedatives. Fully aware of this, Ryan eats up, cursing his stepdad under his breath. Soon, John discovers June's gone when he tries to wake her up. Panicked, he goes to Ryan for help, but the drugs have already taken effect. On the other hand, Alf comes back to the spot where he left Steinar. However, he just finds pieces of June's outfit on the trees, her knife on the ground, and naked legs on the ground. Meanwhile, Harry sleeps until morning and is awakened by Steinar pounding on the door. When he refuses to let the attacker in, Steinar pushes his way into the room, begging Harry for help. Harry threatens to hurt Steinar if he's done anything to June and the two start to wrestle each other again. But Steiner yells at Harry to stop fighting grabs Harry in a headlock and turns him toward the mirror so that both faces can be seen. In the reflection, June is holding on to Harry where Steinar should be. Despite seeing his girlfriend being reflected in the mirror, Harry makes a run for it. He runs out of the room and through a field of wheat. June follows him, still in Steinar's body, trying to convince him that she's herself, not the henchman who attacked them earlier. She flails and cries, and finally quotes one of his love letters, which makes Harry stop and really look at her. In the meantime, Alf tries to wake up the real Steinar, who is lying down almost naked. Meanwhile, John storms June's school with a crowbar and takes out his frustrations on her locker and grabs June's forgotten textbooks to take home with him. While the students ignore John, the headmaster calls the police but John storms back out again. Following the incident at the school, Christine, who is a police officer, receives a call from her supervisor who asks her to talk to John on her way to work. When she does so, John mentions that June ran away. Back at the motel, Harry and June, who is in Steiner's body go back to their room to try to make sense of what's happening. She tells Harry that one minute she was herself and Steiner was on the ground in front of her. The next, she was Steiner too, and he was still out cold, with his eyes vibrating. During this talk, June begins melting down, worried that she'll be caught in a foreign body forever. Harry looks at her in the mirror and looks at her on the bed, then turns to go to her and offer comfort. But June tells him she doesn't want him close to her when she looks like this. A while afterwards, June speaks in Norwegian but has no idea she's doing it. She translates that she's hungry and Harry leaves to get food. Before leaving, June begs him not to bring anyone else into the room. After getting chips and sandwiches, Harry sits in his car for a breather and begins to cry. He starts the car, ready to give up and leave, but then he sees June's sweet 16 candy on the floor and realizes he can't leave her. In the meantime, a hotel maid walks into the young couple's room before June can stop her. When she sees June in the body of a fully grown man, emotionally distraught, she agrees to come back later. Soon afterwards, Harry comes back, worried about what happened with the maid. But June says she's okay. He then gives her the food and she shoves a sandwich into her mouth. Later, Harry stands in the bathroom, tense and lost. June makes him look at her in the mirror to remind him that she's still here. When he sees how upset she is, he playfully turns on the shower to lighten things up and cool her off. Once they're done laughing, Harry asks why June went back to check on Steinar. She explains that she thought Harry would leave if he didn't have some kind of closure. He was so scared and upset. However, Harry insists that he's not going anywhere and reassures her that he loves her. Suddenly, June jerks and twitches, switching back to her own body. Relieved, Harry jumps into the tub and tenderly holds her. Meanwhile, back at the kidnap van, Alf has gotten real Steiner's body into the back and driven away from the scene of the crime. He's pulled onto the side of the road in a deserted area and is looking at a road map, trying to find a hospital. When June stops being Steinar, real Steinar wakes up, just like he did when Runa gave up his likeness. He awakens, rolls out of the van, stumbles a few feet and vomits. However, Steinar insists they have to go back and get June, without wasting any more time. Alf is shocked to hear this but gives in and the two drive to search for June. Elsewhere, Ryan wakes up from his drugged sleep and taunts his stepdad. Unamused, John goes straight to interrogating him about June. He explains that June has a condition that Alina too had, which isn't actually epilepsy. However, Ryan stops him and tells him he doesn't get to talk about Alina or say her name. Their conversation is interrupted by Christine and another uniformed cop who have come to talk to John about the incident at the school. Christine informs John that the school won't be pressing charges for his assault on the locker, but he still needs to be more careful with his anger. She asks for details about June and decides that June didn't plan on going far or for long. 
because she only took a small bag. Christine then says that teenagers can be secretive and run off and do selfish things when they're angry, like her son. But she's sure June is fine, and they'll report her missing if she isn't back by tomorrow. Following this, John goes back to question Ryan who is absorbed in an online poker game and ignores him. Ryan has four aces and is just betting 758 pounds when John cuts the power at the circuit breaker box. Enraged, John goes through June's room again and finds Harry's last letter to her. Without wasting any time, he gets in his truck to go find Christine. In Norway, Rana takes Alina to a basement lab where Havorsen wants to run tests on her to determine the original emotional trigger that caused her to shape shift. He says that emotion is what causes her to continue to do so and encourages her to let the emotions come. But if she feels out of control, he advises her to remember who she is. Next, Havorsen puts on classical music and shows her a series of slides that she doesn't react to. Then, an image of a mother humpback whale and her baby causes Alina to get emotional. She flashes back to images of John leaving in his truck without her. Her emotions become more intense as another image. A couple holding each other reminds her of being with John. Finally, an image of a dead ant causes her emotions to go haywire and she struggles desperately not to shift. She begs Havorsen to stop the test but instead, he continues showing her slides as he encourages her to remember her mantra. As she shakes violently, Havorsen leaves the room where Runa is waiting and the duo listen to Alina continuing to struggle. Later, Steiner calls Havorsen with an update and explains what happened and tells Havorsen about June's ability. He promises he has everything under control and returns to the van. Elf, who is just a hired hand, questions what happened with June and Harry and why Steinar is so adamant about finding June. Steinar explains that June is special and he has to take her back with him which convinces Elf to help. Steinar then tells him to go to June's home as he reasons she'll go there if she's scared. At the house, Ryan finally resolves to go talk to John. He braces himself and leaves his apartment but his agoraphobia makes him want to go right back inside. He's locked himself out, though, so he runs to John's house. As Ryan waits for John to return, he sees Alf and Steiner coming up the drive. They break in while Ryan hides in a closet. Once inside, the two strangers search for June, but when they don't find her and leave. Before they depart, though, Ryan overhears Steiner mention June's name. Meanwhile, at the hotel, June and Harry go to their car. June offers to go home but Harry says they should continue on their journey. He still believes they can get away from all their problems together. Hence, they head towards South London determined and together. When they stop at a gas station, Harry and June continue to discuss Steinar. They search his clothes to try to learn more about him. He has Norwegian coins in his pocket and June discovers the video message from her mother on Steinar's phone. In the message, Alina cryptically refers to her desire to help June through her emotions as she turns 16 and tells her to trust and go with the man who shows her the video. Alina says she didn't want to leave June and Ryan but John made her. Touched by the message, June explains to Harry that her father said that Alina left because she didn't want June or Ryan. She had believed her mother didn't love her until she saw the message. Meanwhile, Steiner and Elf try to figure out what to do next. Elf, who was photographing June from a distance on her last day at school, shows Steiner a photo. They go to the apartment of the man Harry bought his car from in the previous episode. Steiner punches the man when he opens the door and forces him back inside. He tortures the man to get him to reveal where June and Harry went. Elsewhere, John meets Christine at her house and tells her Harry and June are together after showing her the letter he found from Harry to June. They argue over whose kid was responsible for the situation. Ultimately, Christine concludes that they likely planned the whole thing together. She believes they'll come back eventually and tells John if they haven't returned by tomorrow she'll get a search put out. Suddenly, Christine has to leave as she receives a call to the apartment where Steinar broke in. The man there, Dean, insists that it was a break-in. But Christine notices the ring Harry gave him as payment for the car. Suspicious, she tells Dean to tell her what really happened. Meanwhile, John returns to his house and finds Ryan waiting. He's shocked Ryan went outside. But Ryan ignores his questions about that and gets straight to the point. Two men broke into the house, and one said June's name which makes both the men worried. Ryan admits June was supposed to call him but hasn't. When John insists Ryan tell him where his daughter is, Ryan makes him agree that if he tells John where she is, he will come with him. Eventually, John agrees and Ryan desperately tries to manage his anxiety as they drive to find June. In Sweden, Havorsen and Runa discuss Alina's test. Havorsen cannot come to a concrete conclusion as the results of the test confuse him. However, they also discuss the news that June is indeed a shape shifter. This makes Havorsen excited as it is rare to find a mother and daughter shifter pair. That night, June and Harry are excited to make it to London. They go to an apartment to stay with some of Dean's friends. Unfortunately, the living arrangements aren't exactly what they had in mind. 
but Harry reassures June that no one will come after them there. As they look at the view of London from the roof, Harry asks June if she thinks her mother really has epilepsy, or if her father knew about the shape shifting. June is skeptical but Harry believes that all of John's rules may have had to do with his knowledge of what could happen to her. As he talks, June watches Alf's and Steiner's van pull up outside the apartment. Without wasting further time, Harry and June run to their car and speed away. Steinar and Alf see the car drive past the alley where they've parked and run back to their van and drive after them. June observes that her mother's video says she could trust Steiner so she's not sure that running is the best plan. But Harry seems certain it is and keeps driving until he loses control and hits a parked car. They leave their damaged car and continue to flee on foot. After a brief chase, June and Harry manage to escape from Steinar and spend the night at the top of a slide on a children's playground. They then go to clean up in a public restroom and then continue on their way. Meanwhile, in their hometown, Harry's mother goes to find John at his farm, but he's already left with Ryan. Unfortunately, Ryan isn't handling their quest well. He desperately wants to help his sister, but going out into the world before he's had any treatment for his agoraphobia makes him anxious. Seeing this, John thinks he should take Ryan home, but the latter musters his courage and insists they keep going. In Norway, Alina is still reeling from the test Dr. Havorsen gave her the previous day. Runa goes to talk to Alina, who is considering leaving. Against Havorsen's wishes, Runa brings up June and tells Alina that June ran away from home, and they've confirmed she's a shapeshifter. However, this news horrifies Alina as she didn't want that for June. Following this, Runa finds Havorsen and tells him what she told Alina, and claims she did it because she got confused. It is clear that her mental state and alertness are getting worse as time passes. In London, June and Harry try to figure out what to do. They left their bags at the apartment where they had planned on staying so they have nothing but the clothes on their backs. Then they run into a stranger who offers them sympathy and shelter on his boat, which they cautiously accept. As they make themselves comfortable, June starts thinking about Steiner again. He knows where her mom is, which is more than anyone in her family can say. Harry suggests that maybe John knew more than he let on about her mom's conditions and about her whereabouts. But June insists John felt as abandoned by Alina as she and Ryan did. Elsewhere in the city, Steinar wakes up in the back of Alf's van. Steinar is disparate as he can't find June. Seeing this, Alf suggests they talk to the kids in the apartment where they originally found her. In Norway, Havorsen attempts to discuss things with Alina and tells her June will be safe and happy at the sanctum. Alina says she wants that for June, but she can't continue with her treatments or else she'll go mad. After a brief silence, Havorsen wants to know how she'll help June now that they know she's a shapeshifter too. Alina claims she knew about June from the moment she was born, but always put herself first. Havorsen counters that when June gets there she'll have a support system and a role model, and Alina will have to be the kind of role model June needs. On the stranger's boat, Harry and June soon fall asleep as they are too tired. When they wake up they find he's having a party above deck. The owner of the boat, Shane, offers them a job if they distribute drugs for him on the party circuit. He'll give them a percentage in cash. Since the duo have no better option, they agree. Meanwhile, Steinar and Alf plot what to do outside the apartment where June and Harry stayed. They watch as John and Ryan pull up at the spot. Following this, John forces himself into the apartment where he finds one of the tenants and asks him if June was there. The tenant says she took off but then John notices her bag. Enraged, John throws the boy against the wall but the boy swears June and Harry are gone and they seemed like they were on the run. John then takes June's bag and goes back to his car. In the car, Ryan informs John that Harry's mother, Christine, has been calling. When he gets her on the phone, Christine tells him the location of Harry's crashed car. John informs her that he's already in London but hasn't found June or Harry yet. In response, Christine tells him to look for the kids at the area hospitals. She wants to come help but John tells her to stay at home in case the kids return. They agree to continue to share even the smallest scrap of information. As John and Ryan drive off, Steiner and Alf follow. Elsewhere, Harry and June hit the club with Shane and his girlfriend, Lil. They split up to find buyers, doing well with their new gig. Once they've sold all their pills, they have some fun of their own. But Shane and Lil decide to push things up a notch by dosing their drinks. When a fight breaks out on the dance floor, June starts to get stressed. Lil comes over and hugs her, and June shifts into Lil as the real Lil goes catatonic. Next, June, not realizing what happened, finds Harry and tries to kiss him but Harry pushes her away. He knows it's June but he still doesn't feel right kissing her when she looks like someone else. Finally realizing what's happened, June starts crying and runs to the bathroom. Harry follows and tries to calm her down. Once Harry gets her relaxed again, June transforms back to herself. 
They leave the club, where they find a still unconscious Lil being taken away in an ambulance. Shane is standing at a safe distance. He can't understand what happened. Lil's always been able to handle her drugs. June, feeling responsible, steps forward and gives an EMT one of the pills she was selling, assuming that's what Lil also took. June goes in the ambulance with Lil. Outside, Shane tries to give Harry his cut of their take for the night. But Harry refuses. After a while, Harry finds June in the waiting room of the hospital. June tells him they checked her in too, and she gave them her real name. But she won't see the nurse. Unfortunately, Lil's in a coma which hits Harry hard. His dad was in a coma and hasn't been the same since. Later that night, June goes to see Lil while Harry calls his mother. He tells her he's not sure he's strong enough to stay on his current path. Christine asks him to tell her where he is so she can come get him. Harry ignores the request and instead, he tells her about June's ability. After what happened with Lil, Harry's worried June could hurt him. Not understanding, Christine tells Harry that what he's experienced is just love. As the end credits roll in, Christine adds that things go wrong sometimes and one can't do anything about it. Hearing these words, Harry realizes that what's happening isn't June's fault and he hangs up the phone after apologizing to his mum. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave 1000 likes or 100 comments if you'd like us to continue part 2. Thank you.